Philippians chapter 2, we'll start again with our primary scripture. I want to reset the stage and just sort of build on what we said, uh, doing a little bit of repeating, but making sure that we understand, we understand the premise, because if we don't, um, there's no need me teaching this. The premise of this is incredibly important. So in Philippians chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, and particularly verse 6, who being in the form of God, or who in being is formed out from God. He is God in being, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God on the basis of being seen as God by virtue of all the trappings that come with being God. <clears throat> But he made himself of no reputation. And what that means is he emptied himself of his visible glory as God. And what that means is <clears throat> he was God. But he didn't present himself as God in the sense of trying to convince everyone based on supernatural things or overwhelming people with his godhood, but rather he actually became like a servant. He became a man and he became like a servant. He became a man and then he became a servant, which is, you know, you can be a man and not be a servant. And then he became obedient unto death, but then it wasn't even just death, but it was the death of the cross. And he, he went lower and lower and lower, which when it comes to reputation, um, I mean, why would a person want a higher reputation? Well, not always, but many times ambition is your motivation behind trying to get or maintain a good reputation. <clears throat> Ambition. Um, uh, while I was down in uh, Mexico and with, was with Wyman down there, we had a board meeting and I'm on his board. And <clears throat> he started off and he's pulled out a piece of paper and he says, well, uh, here's the agenda for the meeting. And it just sounded foreign to me because so much of the time we don't have an agenda. <laughs> We just want the Lord glorified. And of course, it's a business meeting, so you're supposed to have an agenda, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Not saying anything neg about, negative about that, just the thought that you come with an agenda. <clears throat> and Jesus' agenda was to glorify the Father by the self giving nature in man, to be the man, put it like this, to be the man of God's dreams. The man he always wanted, the mankind that he always, that he, that he hoped for, that he created everything for, and to simply, you know, became a servant. <clears throat> what does that mean? Through this self-giving nature, it puts others first. That's what we call being a servant. When you're a king, you don't put others first, most, most kings. You put yourself first. You put your comfort first. You put your, how you look first, and the things that you want and the needs, and you surround yourself with people. You surround yourself with servants that will meet your every need. Well, Jesus is the king of kings, and yet he didn't come to display that. He came with the strict purpose of hiding that and serving, okay, and, and again, let's see if we can make sure we get this. 
meeting the needs of others or caring about others who in all reality were lesser than he was, but because he didn't clue them as to who he was, he appeared many times as less than they were, as a servant to them, therefore they're the higher one. Does that make, does, does that make sense, you know? And he did that all the time. So um, <clears throat> I want to read a statement. It actually was one I didn't get to last time, but it is along the same lines, and it is sort of a repeat in a different way of what we said last time. <clears throat> Many of us know certain, uh, certain aspects of this. Thing. Well, before I say it, let me just make sure that we understand these two categories, and that is official glory. You remember that one? You don't want to forget that one. And glory of nature. Official glory and glory of nature. And Jesus gave up his official glory. Now, when I say gave it up, I don't mean it was gone. It was hid. It was veiled. It was equal to the veil that hid the glory of God behind and within the Holy of Holies. As I said before, many times we attribute that veil to the devil or that veil to the law. But what does the Hebrews say? That veil is what? His flesh. His flesh where he's becoming man and he's hiding this glory and this outward bright shining and this manifestation that I am God. I mean, you know, you peel the flesh off and let everyone see him in full glory and we all melt like slugs. <clears throat> so that veil is his flesh. And it was there intentionally until the cross was settled and resurrection was on the way. The death was done. And when he died, dropped his head down. From there on, it was, it was going to be about resurrection. There has to be a death, then a resurrection, three days later. And so in the earth side, in the man side, it is about simply manifesting the nature of God in self-giving. Um, for example, this little scripture, I think it's in Romans, always was, was sort of a, it bum fuzzled me. I don't know if, if people in other states or countries get bum fuzzled, but here in Texas we get bum fuzzled by things. And, and it said, it says, if you die with him, you'll be raised. Now, I understood that. Anybody understand that? Yeah, that's pretty. But it says, if you suffer with him, you'll reign. Okay. Okay. See, that makes me want to go somewhere, not right to these notes here, and maybe I should. But go to go right here to comprehend that <clears throat> Philippians, and this is very important, the Philippian scriptures that we've been reading every time is not about death and resurrection. You ever thought about that? Let's, let's read through it and, and see what the full meaning is. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in, the, in form, who in being is formed out from God, thought it not something to be grasped after, to have all the trappings and, and proofs that he is God, but made himself of no reputation and emptied himself of his visible glory and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Okay, there's death. And yet, that's actually presented here as one of the things that he did in giving up his visible glory. Do you see that? I mean, in many cases, that would have been the highlight 
in this set of scriptures, it's actually just printed, presenting that as one of the manner in which he gave up his visible glory and became as a man. Okay, then it says, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. All right, uh, well, let's finish it off. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> All right. Um, that, those scriptures there in verse 9 through 11 really aren't describing resurrection. They're describing ascension. Do you know the difference? I mean, there's a difference between resurrection and ascension. Was Jesus resurrected? Yes. But he also ascended. What? Ascended. He ascended to the throne. Am I right or wrong? He ascended to the throne. Amen. I mean, Jesus could die for sin, folks, and be raised, and that would be it. Okay, they killed you. You didn't deserve it. We raised you from the dead That's it. That's as far as it goes. If you suffer, if you die with him, you shall live also with him. That's death and resurrection. Do you agree? Yes. That's resurrection. But these scriptures are not talking about resurrection. They're talking about ascension. And they're bringing forth this suffering, this, and, and, and let me tell you, it's nothing more than self it's nothing more, suffering is nothing more than living a self, selfless life among incredibly selfish people. That's called suffering. Does it make sense? Well, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I need to explain further that these people will use you and throw you away when they get through with you. That's suffering. No glory, no honor. That's important. And that's what we're trying to deal with this, this semester. And that's what we're trying to have the Holy Spirit open our eyes to the Word of God to see more than, yes, we see death and resurrection. Yes, we see that. And yes, we comprehend that. But these script, but, but does, okay, and does death and resurrection apply to us? Yes. But so does kenosis. And so does ascension. Amen. Because, folks, we were raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we are seated there on that throne with him. That is not required by death and, and resurrection. But God has uniquely tied them together in this kenosis thing. You can call it suffering. You can call it whatever you want. But in kenosis, he has tied kenosis to ascension. And so to have all that is true of Christ in, in Resurrection, or what we call, we would say in ascension, uh, right here, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under there, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the. Just to, just to make sure that we're getting this, if this was talking about just death and resurrection, then it would say. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all of those who he died for. Can I get amen on that? That's what it would say. But interestingly enough, it ha it's not making reference to that. It's not drawing on that because here, it's not if you die with him, you shall live with him. Here, it is if you suffer with him in kenosis, you shall reign with him. Amen. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Because then, yes. Well, I was just going to say, I, 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 that's amazing, but I think that there's a misconception, I mean, among evangelical Christians, that, that, that the suffering thing of Christ, that this thing he did for a little bit, or this, this self emptying, is this thing he did for a little bit, and like, if we do that for a little bit, then we're going to get to like, you know. 
Right. And, and missing out on, on the nature of that's what the ruling and the reigning is going to be the same as, just <laughs> as this. That's right. The physical precedes the spiritual, as you know, we see in the, in the word a lot. Well, it's like when he came, I'm not discounting the magnificence of what he did on the cross, but he came and emptied himself and so we could see physically what he was about to do spiritually by becoming even smaller and unseen by when he ascends and, and being on the throne and that spirit being sent to us to become basically unseen, you know, because we're the ones that are seen, and he becomes even smaller spiritually throughout us to be in the earth, yes. you know, and, yeah. and that is his reigning and that is his ruling, you know, it's like just, I don't know, maybe for the tape or something, just to, to be clear of what that reigning and ruling is. We assume, we assume that one leads to the other and that there is a transformation from one to the other, meaning suffer, reign. Okay, I suffered for a while, now I reign. But the suffering, folks, was kenosis. And the one on the throne is a little lamb as though it had been slain. His nature didn't change. This was putting him into the place of the glory that was rightfully his, that he did go through a time and empty himself of that visible glory, but he didn't empty himself of who he is, not when he walked the earth and not when he sits on the throne. He's still, you know, the term used, Lamb of God upon the throne. Did I lose anybody? He's still who he is. He's still that. God exalted that. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't glorify it and then say, okay, it's over. He exalted it to the highest position and said, this is, and folks, he did it, that at the name of Jesus, why did it say that? Why didn't it say Christ? Why didn't it say Messiah? Why didn't it use any of the terms? It used Jesus because Jesus is the man. Jesus, the name Jesus represents just the man. Amen. The man. You don't find, you know, you don't find him. Yes, he was called Savior in the Old Testament and stuff like that. But you don't find somebody saying he should be called Jesus says he shall be called Emmanuel. Okay. But that man, what does it say? Um, that there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And so this man, and this, this whole thing, and we we'll, won't we'll, we'll get into it this go-around, but we will get into it because I want to really show this reality of what Jesus has brought about by, this, by being man and by making it clear so that we understand this isn't just about being dead and then coming up out of death. This is about being, and I'll just say it like this, it's about being lamb and coming up being exalted lamb or finally receive an official glory, but he's still lamb. And what God's really pleased with is not the trappings of official glory, throne, people worshiping, holy, 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 glory, 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 but the lamb on the throne. Is that, am I making, yes. Yes. Amen. If everyone didn't hear it, it's Mallory's talking about where David said, God, for thou desirest truth in the inward parts, where it becomes being not the trappings of being. And, and it's so important. I mean, these, I know I'm, this is early. We're going to keep going on this theme this whole semester. But this thing, Jesus is not afraid of official glory. 
Listen carefully. This is very important. In the Bible, in the Gospels, when he walks, he's not afraid of official glory. He just doesn't take it to himself. The Father continually is, is glorifying his Son through different things. Am I right or wrong? Think about it. But Jesus, Jesus won't capitalize on it because that's not his mission. His mission is just to be. Does that sound familiar? To be Amen. or not to be. That is the question. And so, <clears throat> and so this, this to him, to Jesus, is my father's not wanting flashy son of God. Flashy son of God sat on the throne before this all happened. He was the exalted son of God before eternity was. All the angels adored him. He, he was the son of his father. And you can read about that in many different places. In, in uh, Psalms 139 and other places. And if that was the case, you know, here's the thing that I've often said. If Jesus was the son of God, the glorified majesty of all, you know, creation, because he was before creation and everything, and... He was that all the way up till he became a little baby, and then for 33 years, he wasn't that, and then all of a sudden, he's raised back up to it. Well, that's not really that glorious. It's like 800 billion years he's been that, and for only 33 years, he wasn't, but now he's back. Woo, yeah! But there's more to it than that, because what God exalted and raised was a man who had this spirit and nature. He, he raised, if you will, I'll say it like this, a glorified man. Glorified in the sense of the glory of nature, and therefore you get official glory. But that lamb on the throne, folks, is still going to be uh, after his bride and wanting her to be in his image and, it's, and pouring whatever he has to her. She's just a branch. So all flow comes from him. Out of him, lamb on that throne gushes up from lamb and throne, but then it gushes up out through New Jerusalem, the bride, and then it gushes out to all nations. Do you see what I'm saying? saying that's, you're starting to wrap up the book by the time you get to that. That's still all coming from lamb. The only difference is he's received some official glory at that point, but it doesn't matter to him. Yeah, that's good. Yes. You know, the, the, this entire little statement, and without the, the last sentence, is really purposeless. But I mean, to what end is the glory is to the glory of the Father. Yes, yes, amen. Perfect, perfect, well, well said. Because God is glorified with the Son. Wait a minute, Son of Man, Son of Man. He's glorified with what? With Jesus who didn't take on official glory, was willing to give it up, to, to not just give it up, veil it. Now when I say give it up, he's still who he is, so all of that is do him. And one of the things that I hope to be able to show in this, in this course is official glory is not a bad thing. It is due him every step of the way, but he is of a spirit that he is living to the glory of the Father, as Mike said. And from that, that's glorifying the Father. That's bringing glory and honor. And God says, God says, I will glorify that, official glory. I will glorify that above everything else. Glorify what? One who didn't think it was something to fight for his official glory. One who didn't think it was something that he would be seen as man and less than God. 
Does that make sense to everyone? So God said, you know, because I remember sharing some time back on this, and I don't remember what the name of the class was, but I was sharing on these very scriptures, and I was saying, God didn't exalt the, the guy who was the best one as the manager of the universe here. Do you, I mean, think about that. We would say, you know, we're pragmatic, practical. There has to be some practical reason. That's, that's what it means to be pragmatic. So we say, and God looked, and he said, you're the only one who's really capable of managing the universe. You are the best man for the job, wherefore God hath highly exalted him. Folks, even though it mentions the death here because the, the, the self-givingness went to death. Listen to what I just said. The self-givingness went to death. That's why it's mentioning the death here. It's not mentioning the death as, um, again, that he saved the whole world or, or that he's uh, accomplished the salvation of the world. I mean, think of that. I mean, that's, we think that God raised Jesus from the dead simply because he saved all of mankind. This is saying he raised him from the dead because he was willing to not have official glory and be seen as a man and be seen as a servant and willing to just give himself. Forget the in purpose of save souls. He didn't, but he didn't say that. He left that out conveniently so that we would see that he didn't say, you're deserving, you're the best man, not in these scriptures, you're the, the best man for the job, wherefore I have highly exalted you. He said this, you are the best person to be exalted above because of this self-giving nature. Wherefore, he hath highly exalted him. Uh, Kelly, first. pouring himself out to people in that throne in the book of Revelation, what he is doing is, it says, and all nations shall be gathered before him. Does it not say that? But then it says, and all nations shall be brought in and shall into what? New Jerusalem, the bride. And from her he shall flow out. So, it's even higher than giving to all nations or pouring out. It's making them one, making them bride. Amen. And being the life flow and the dynamo, lamb on a throne, the dynamo on the inside of her, on the inside of the bride, on the inside of the bride, on the inside of each one of us that are part of that bride. And what's he doing in that process continually? You tell me what he's doing in you. He's giving his life through you. He's giving your time, isn't he? <laughs> he's giving your energy. He's giving your efforts. He's doing it, but he's doing it through you and in you. And then that's why God said, I will highly exalt him and put him on a throne. But folks, he put him on the throne of your heart. Amen. For what purpose? So that he could flow out in, in, in what? We say, so he can flow out in power. So he can flow out in self-giving. That's right. Amen. Did, did you have a comment? Yes, uh, I would say that uh, if he does the glory of nature, it represents the fact that things, natural things of the earth and the fish are just high above, high authority. So therefore, the, the fish of things, because when Jesus, when Jesus did that, the us on the land nature, the way of nature, he sent it to hell for us about the way of nature, which is things of nature. 
first story which was rather hardcore, he thought that until, you know, that he was supposed to become an official, like an official for us. See, if you let me, if you have to go, and then go out through us, with body and bride. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, it's important while he's on the earth, because we've been talking a lot about him being exalted and exalted to the point of official glory. But to fully grasp this, we have to see him on earth. We have to comprehend how he handled life. And here's why. <coughs> Because you and I have to comprehend how we, we handle life by Christ. And if we don't know him out external to us as he walked the earth 2,000 years ago, how are we going to know him within and therefore know even how to yield to him? You see what I'm saying? So um, just using human examples, which we used last time, that um, many of you know that you... Uh, uh, you've blessed people, you've helped people, you've talked with people, you've given money, or you've done, gone the extra mile, you've done this over and over and over, and, uh, and, and no matter how much you've done for them, later on, if, a, if that person that you've done all that for, if the opportunity comes uh, where they would be doing something or whatever, and you could be invited, and in the invi invitation of that, you would be receiving official glory from them publicly. Many times you get excluded. Anybody ever experienced that? Well, if you haven't, you will. And, and so there is this thing of, well, let me just read it here. Many of us know from, from experience there are people who will not give you the true honor you deserve from them based on how much you've done for them or have been there for them. Later, when they have an opportunity to do something whereby they might show you official glory, you're excluded. But when they really need someone they trust in the Lord in crisis, they go back to you again. Some of you know what I'm talking about. What, what, what am I saying based on what's written on the board? When it comes to, a, well, first of all, when they need help, they come to you. And you pour out and you give and you bless and you strengthen and you're there for them. But then when they get on their feet, and then there's the opportunity where they could really say something and, and give official glory to you, that time comes. You're excluded from that. So then later, when things go bad, all the people they gave official glory to, they don't call upon. They go back to the one because they are, tr they are honoring you without knowing it. They're honoring the glory of nature when they call upon you. Do you understand what I'm saying? They've seen Jesus. They don't want to call it the highest, but he is the lamb on the throne, the highest. He is the most high. This nature is the most high. But they don't acknowledge it in this over here. You know, who knows why? You know, they, it, there's a lot of reasons why. But they always acknowledge it over here because deep down they know you got the Lord. You do have the Lord, yes. You're right. There are a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons that that official glory is kept kept from you is so that it is the mercy of God that you may be transformed, so that that glory of nature is wrought in you. And and that really, for us, that's what it's all about. Right, right. And let's face it, the example we gave here. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, when I just gave that example then you also know this, that when you have ministered and been there for somebody, and I mean, you, you've given your time, you've given maybe your money, you've poured yourself out for them, and then when they get an opportunity, they don't give you a, you're not even invited or whatever, you get your feelings hurt. I know I have. 
Does it help you to shake your head yes now? <laughs> I know I have. I know that I have. And then, and this is, I'm, go, I'm still sharing along the lines of what Shay just said. And here's some of the thoughts that run through your head. My God, I was there when nobody else was there for them. I, you know, I loved them when everybody else thought they were unlovely and everything. I invited them into my house. I did all this stuff for them. And, and you know, now they, they're not standing with me or they're not, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? And you, you get hurt. And you go through stuff. And you can, you can take several different paths from that point. You can say, well, if that's the way people are going to be, to heck with them. <laughs> There's your proving whether it's Christ in you or not, or is it just you walking around with hurt feelings and wounded? And you know that you can get wounded and then wounded by someone else and wounded again, and pretty soon you're walking around with wounds and what else? Putrifying, Putrifying sores, bitterness. Bitterness, you know? And then, then what kind of minister are you? But best you're just doing your duty or you're going through the motions. That's the best. And at worst, you just quit, all out quit, because people uh, don't treat you right. Okay? Do you really think that happened? I think I've read it in a story. I hope never to get in that place where that would, those things would affect me where people do that. <clears throat> well, they do, you know, and, and I'm gonna but I'm going to tell you something. I understand that when they do that. And I pray for people. I've, I've prayed, today I've prayed for people that it didn't even, wasn't even in relationship to me. Because I realize, but they've done stuff to other people. But I realize that when you do that, there's obviously a lack of Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? Obviously, there's a, well, what is supposedly our purpose? To help people get more of Christ. But instead, when we see a lack of Christ, we go, you dirty, red, you know, oh, God, just take them out. They're bad. They're evil. Well, wasn't, wasn't and isn't I bad and evil? You know, I mean, apart from this vine juice that flows in me from time to time, it's just me. And it's not very pretty. And it's no, it's not, you know, it's no prettier in me than it is in them. It's just Adam. It's just flesh. And if the roles were reversed, I would hope somebody would pray for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I would hope some, you know, and, and you know, I think it's going to be funny because, you know, it, quote, unquote, standing there on Judgment Day before God and something, and God reveals who actually was praying for you during those times, and it's none of the people that you thought it was. It's the people you were worse, treating the worst. And Jesus would Say, I'm going to highly exalt that spirit. <laughs> and he will. And the Father will exalt it. You know why? Because that spirit is not you. That's the Son in you. And you have just stopped short of just quitting or getting bitter. Or, and you've said, oh, God, I'm serious about this. I want to live this. I want this to be real in me. I can't. If I step across this line, I'm going to mess up everything. God, help it. Help me to turn now and pray for those and uh, pray for those who despitefully use me. Well, that's what Jesus said to do. Yes. A lot of people have been told the doctor that God was just something in that power of your head like that. Not to them. Um, because when you're back to pray for the person that's doing it to you wrong like that, then the Lord sees you honestly in the heart. So he's looking at the heart by the land that you're with. Be, be, be with the lamb, like that. So therefore, it's 
think that as you make the movie about the whole thing, that's so. That's why I bought the clock or dummy like that to represent the, the real thing to protect the, you know, the camera so that nothing happens to the real thing, which is Jesus. As the people make fun of Jesus, they can make fun of Jesus a long time ago. Well, and that's right. That's exactly right. Well, anybody familiar with, familiar with the scripture that says something like this? It says, uh, uh, many of the Pharisees believed in him, but they would not acknowledge it for, what was it, for fear? One says fear of the Jews, and the other one is fear of being put out of the synagogue. Okay, now let's, let's draw that up. Let's draw that, that's, a play, that's a, in the playbook of Adam. <laughs> draw that one up. <laughs> and let's take a look at that, that play right here. Well, the enemy comes here and the flesh goes here. <clears throat> what we're dealing with in that situation is, I believe you're the one glory, by glory of nature, but I cannot give you official glory publicly because I'm going to be kicked out of the church or I'm going to be, kicked, I'm going to be looked down on or people will think less of me for doing that. So, what are they saying? Let's, let's finish the, the, the play here. One of those Pharisees that believes in him but won't give him official glory, they, they, they hear that Jesus is out in the desert and all the people are bringing the sick and the needy and the hurting to him. Okay? Do you remember where, I mean, there were 5,000 not counting women and children out there. Do you think that maybe at least one of those Pharisees who believed in him but would not give him brought somebody in their family that was hurting? Yeah. I believe they did. I believe they did. They won't, they won't take him to the meeting house, but they'll go out to his meeting figuring that those people that are really against him aren't going to be out there. And they're going to, and, and so what is it? They will allow Jesus near in relationship to the glory of nature. Self-giving. Don't, don't equate that simply with healing and miracles. Equate, and we'll get into that. I want a whole class on, on dealing with that. But equate that with self-giving in whatever form it comes. Okay? It's him giving himself. And so they, they'll, they will allow Jesus near when it comes to the glory of nature. Because why? Because they need him. Because they have a need. But they do not acknowledge his need. They do not acknowledge his place. Scott? Yeah, it's, I was just thinking it's, it's like, kind of like, um, you know, just wanting to be near him so that you can benefit from what he does, but being unwilling to be joined and becoming a partaker of that, of that shame and that pouring out uh, I just I kind of got this example of uh, you know a guy that falls in love with a woman and maybe they're, you know maybe it's an interracial thing or something and he can't bring her home to his parents because you know of the the shame of you know what the that stigma like, yeah the stigma or whatever yeah well obviously but it's a much higher level than that but but it is that thing of, of uh, and, and my point is that I'm actually trying to show that deep within all of those people that do that, there still is an acknowledgement that the Lord is there, that there is a glory. And, uh, and folks, some of those people might even talk bad about you on a regular basis, but when they get in trouble, they don't go to the people that listen to them. Good way, good way of putting it, isn't it? Because they know, they listen, they ain't with the Lord. They go to you. They go to you. And they ask and they seek the Lord out of you because they believe. Now you say, here's, here's what you'd want to say. Well, you said I wasn't of God. You said the Lord wasn't even with me. You helped bring this whole cloud, but now you want the Lord, and where are you looking? You're coming here? And then the, the, the piece de resistance. 
Get the heck out of here. That's flesh. The Lord says, and folks, I've been in that situation where in my mind when they first show up, it's like all that's going through my mind. And then I get ready to act, and the Lord kicks in, and I'm just going, shut up. Let me, <laughs> let me tell them off just once, you know. You never let me tell anybody off, you know. And then you just pour out, and you love them, and you bless them, and you cover them, and you pray for them, and they get on their feet, and they go back out, and then they don't tell anybody. Okay. But this one, this man who came, actually made himself of no reputation. He veiled that kind of glory and told him, don't tell anybody. Isn't that pretty amazing? He did that regularly. That wasn't just once or twice, folks. That was a regular thing that he did. All right, let me finish reading this statement, and then we'll, we'll stop here. Um, when there was need or misery, he always was honored, but rejected many times over his official glory. <clears throat> and so you get the feeling, as long as Jesus is out there healing or feeding the multitudes, people were following him because there was a benefit to themselves. But you never, you never get the feeling that the people say, this guy's it. Let's march into the temple and all declare Jesus is it. He should be glorified by all of us. It's like, no, no, we'd not be taking that. It's almost like he's a carpenter with healing skills. Doesn't it sort of feel like that a little bit? It feels that's what it felt like the whole time. No official glory, you know. And and you know, you have a few times when somebody says, oh, no, he's of God. And other people, no, he's not of God. He's a deceiver. Can you imagine them calling Jesus? A he, for he deceiveth the people. You know? No, there's stuff going on in the background. Let me tell you. He's deceiving you. This ain't really how he's putting on this front. But here's the real deal. He's deceiving the people. So you got, you, you've always got the enemy muddy in the water so nothing ever rises out of it. The only thing that ever rises out of it is this self-giving, wonderful Jesus who is the perfect picture of what man was meant to be. In fact, Jesus is at that point, because he's the only one, right? He's the ideal man. He's the ideal man. And no one else is. And the Father, in the end of this, is going to highly exalt him. He's going to not just raise him from the dead. He's going to exalt him. He's going to ascend him. He's going to ascend to the throne. He's going to ascend to official glory. Isn't that cool? All right, we'll stop even though we still got a few more minutes left. Take a break and we'll come back. <laughs>